Hi everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net and here we're going to talk about Python 3 algo trading with both Forex and or crypto. Okay, so who is this for? It's really for a uh, target audience with retail traders, students who uh, want to make a career move into the financial industry as well as algo traders of any experience. So the first target is retail traders. Some stats for you. 90% lose at trading. And a lot of these retail traders will use popular retail trading platforms like TradeStation or MetaTrader and etc. Then we also have some topics on students. This is a big one. Schools teach young students uh, around nine uh, uh, with Python. Also, uh, there's even rumors of something like Microsoft Office will add Python as a scripting language into their suite. Um, graduates also want to be employed at institutions who use Python. Um, a lot of high-frequency trading firms widely use both Python and C++. And there's a lot of good uh, starting resources to learn from, from, from both places like Quantopian or Quantstart. Also, for the more advanced traders, algo trading, uh, here's some more stats. 80% uh, of the uh, all orders are driven electronically. Uh, there's a huge interest in trading in all asset classes using this methodology. And it's probably the most profitable of any kind of traders since uh, a lot of these type of traders can scale in parallel through automation. So the question is why Python? What are the pros? Uh, there's a quote, Liberty, when it begins to take root, is a plant of rapid growth, um, no different than open source, which Python is. And then even at eBay PayPal, Python has been some of the fastest adoption of PayPal within the application security group. So... What about in high frequency trading? Python is excellent for doing quant studies and math analysis. We use it in this manner for HFT. Uh, also, some of the basic uh, packages for Python and tool sets that you could use, uh, we like to use with Linux compliant, including Mac OS 10 or Mac OS, uh, including a package like Pandas, NumPy, Matplotlib, PIP, FXCMPY, as well as CCXT, and I'll show you those last two in a minute. So some of the characteristics you need to have, uh, a lot of people need to have these type of uh, characteristics. So you have to be comfortable with the mentioned packages and tools. Uh, you also have to have access and be confident with computer systems. I uh, have to have, most importantly, inner drive motivation, have the time and focus to do this, and background and basic elements of trading. So a lot of questions come back from the newbies with a lot of, uh-huh, uh-huh, okay, what? So... If you're new to all this, here's some resources for uh, learning about programming. A uh, good place to start for free for Python specifically is Microsoft Channel 9. Also, uh, a famous book and series called LearnPythonTheHardware.org, as well as a channel that I really like is uh, SendDesk on YouTube.com. Now, let's talk about strategies. All right, so this is probably what you're looking at if you're new to all this. There's a famous uh, paper out there from SSRN, 101 formulas. And then let's talk about some stuff before we start all of this. So for me, I've been on this for a nine-year journey. Uh, I've been doing a lot of software programming and language assessment, uh, but I fell into Python, and I'm going to explain why. Uh, so one of the things that are the more popular strategies like arbitrage mechanics so I'm going to talk about that. So just imagine this. There's arbitrage opportunities everywhere and at all times. Uh, normally, if you're going to go through a Forex broker, uh, you'll have access to uh, CFDs. Uh, and also through that, you may be able to purchase some stocks through CFDs as well. Uh, so step one, uh, what I would recommend is understand your Euro government sources. So you could go... To a place like Eurostats and download a index called the uh, Economic Sentiment, Indi Sentiment Indicator, uh, ESI, that reveals a lot of forward-looking data. Also, uh, forward-looking data as well from the American government, specifically the St. Louis Fed. Uh, if you look at FRED, uh, I think I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, also, what you really want to do is you want to be able to look at where the market is, the conditions of the market, the regime it's in, and scan the sectors that will lead during those times. 
Uh, for instance, if you are in a recession, usually the sectors that do well are healthcare, maybe military if it's a Republican government. Historically, that's the way it's been. Um, hmm, gold, who knows? But those sort of things, more defensive plays. Uh, also, uh, the classic way to do it is to assess a long and short Basically, the weakest and uh, strongest player be able to trade off of that spread at all times, and uh, you could do quite well, as in this example. Um, and then what you're going to do is, you, as the opportunities come aboard, what you'll do is you'll add them to a watch list. So there'll be a number of parameters that you can use for looking again uh, to gauge market entries. So, for example, if you find that you have the ability uh, to see an opportunity and let's say healthcare is going to uh, grow uh, maybe you could put money into that and uh, again look for that weak and strong player uh, you can use indicators like EPS as a way to gauge that and there's a few other ones as well um, so the next question is can you bottom the markets you kind of can but if you're new to something like technical analysis, it's probably how you will view the market. I'll go over some methodologies that I can use that seem to work okay. Um, so we'll, we'll just that in a minute. Now, the other thing that you could use to verify historical back testing, so and so forth, is, uh, is of course using normal distribution and doing a statistical analysis. Uh, once you start adding on positions from your watch list, then you're going to start worrying about things like position management, worrying about ATR, and that sort of thing. Average true range as a closing or exit indicator, one of many out there. And the other thing we have to also assess is before taking on any entr entries as well as the exits is to measure risk. And that can be done through tools like beta or implied volatility. Uh, the other big one is, as I said, is risk management. Uh, one way you can do that is to throttle the account to protect you if your uh, trading is not going so well. And you can do that using something called Kelly Criterion. So now that we've gone over some of the highlights of building out a typical strategy, um, what about the mechanics or the modules, the infrastructure? Well, as I said, we're going to talk about Python. And I've gone on a, I don't know, a couple of year experiment with Python. I think Python overall is such a ever-changing uh, language uh, it, you could term it as a as an experiment but a good experiment with good results so first is the tools that I use I like Mac OS 10 I like to use my editor keep it real simple sublime uh, if you are looking for some decent package managers you can use brew and my terminal is iterm2 from there uh, as I said for market data live market data for free if you open up a demo account with FXCM, you can easily uh, use FXCM as a test bed in Python without having to move out of any other language with other brokers. Uh, other brokers that I've experimented with are interactive brokers as well as uh, Duca's copy as well. So here are the instructions. I just use, like to use a tool called PIP and PIP3 for PIP, uh, Python 3. And of course, you have this resource here. Uh, if you wanted to understand how to use the FXCM package as a demo of it. So next up is the big one that a lot of people ask about is cryptocurrency for market data. Um, there are a lot of black box uh, technologies out there, robots, uh, JavaScript, and PHP bots, open source as well. The language I like to use is Python. Um, also uh, offers it's a more broad range language. And as well as the package called CCXT can do the job. So again, if you want to use it, get that PIP3, install it using uh, with a CCXT. And all I have to do, really, if you want to understand all this, either go to my YouTube channel at, at Quant Labs or go to my blog at quantlabs.net slash blog and do a search on crypto. You'll find numerous uh, articles and posts there on the exact topic that you're probably looking for. Next up. Uh, the place where you hold all your data, uh, a good place uh, in terms of databases uh, is a recent trend that's picked up, NoSQL. I like to use a tool called Redis, which is in memory. Again, it's, it's open source, and it's very fast, and again, it's true open source. 
Um, so again, using open source uh, NoSQL data. So here's an example of how to interface with it using Python. Uh, you need to use a Redis package. Um, and then all you gotta do is start a local Redis server, and then your Python client or interpreter can start talking to it and start passing data back and forth. It can also be used for uh, maintaining a message queue as well. So on from there, if you wanna push data, i.e. market data, you can easily uh, push data into it or access it uh, by doing things like an L range, an L, um, an L push, I believe. Um, and then there's a bunch of instructions there as well. Okay, so I talked about government source data for looking. Good place you can go is to the St. Louis Fed, uh, a database called FRED. So you can definitely check out that uh, to get a lot of data globally as well. Um, and that's all free. So in order to get it, um, I have a demo there. Uh, there is a package you can use called FRED. And uh, here's some uh, examples of how to interface with it. Okay, charting. A big one. I've looked at numerous charting packages, both in .NET, open source, uh, some commercial, but the one I really like in going with that seems to be universal uh, for live charting as well that can be somewhat support. It's not all that slick, but it's pretty good. It's a commercial product, 150 bucks for Python uh, called Chart Director. And also, if you want to go open source, you can use Matplotlib and Seaborn, but do realize there's some limitations with it, specifically on date manipulation. So let's talk about the charts and how I'm able to generate these. Uh, so these are some of the uh, strat uh, tools and, and indicators I like. And yeah, they are in the, uh, technical. Some of them actually work real well. Fibonacci retracement for valuing uh, pricing and opportunities and targets of price. Uh, obviously, moving average is a big one. Uh, simple moving average cross signals as well for buying uh, opportunities and, and, and selling or exit. Also, trend lines are widely used as well. Um, I also really, I'm starting to get really into harmonic patterns as well for timing uh, and as well um, to confirm how the uh, trend is forming uh, when the price, and price action takes place. All right, so uh, one thing I wanna talk about is my social media, how to stay engaged with myself and my group. Um, we have uh, a meetup.com has uh, quant uh, hyphen finance. I also maintain a Toronto Forex group as well. Um, the big one that I take pride in is the Facebook group, uh, Quant Labs Net. Uh, it's pushing 11,000 people there now. I've also got my YouTube channel uh, of about 6,000 people. And then we've got further social media. I got Facebook pages, I'm on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, and that's pretty well it. Hopefully, uh, you enjoy and uh, join our community over and out. Later.